Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I can't speak for you, nor will I try, but I will say this. I can barely speak for myself. I know. <laughs> try and work on that. <laughs> Marriage is hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're young and you're thinking about marriage for the first time, it's no Cinderella story, I'm telling you. No okay? cakewalk. It's hard yep. to be married for a long amount of time. Trust me on this one, Ron and I know. And we got an email this last week about emotional affairs. And we're going to take that on hmm. on this episode of Men Are So Smart. All right, Ronnie, so we got this email. I like it when they send it to both of us. I do, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that way we can individually reply. And we are kind of marriage experts. Well, hell, between we have, us... We've got 60 years between at us. At least. Yeah. Um, long years. Yeah, Not those aren't dog years. No. No. <laughs> Although they feel like it. Yeah, a couple of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people, hey, they say, how long have you been married? I've been married 27 years, 12 of them happy, <laughs> and not in a row. <laughs> Dear Lou and Ron. I like it so far. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm a straight married woman. Now, this is interesting, Ron. Okay. Because people say demographically this is a show for men. Right. Yet, we've received an email from a nice lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice lady! <laughs> Hello, lady. Uh, I'm a straight married woman, and my best friend at work is a straight married man. All right. Attractive, too. I would never cheat on my husband with my work husband. Wait a minute. Is this from my wife? <laughs> or anyone else, for that matter. But my work friend and I do share intimate concerns about romantic relationships, late night texts, career dilemmas, and innocent flirtatious comments over post-work drinks. Ooh. Where's the line? And this email is signed. You know what? I'm not going to say her name. Yeah. I'll just say work wife. There we go. Okay? All right. So, Ronnie, this is a hot button issue <clears throat> right here. Um, especially in the day and age of social media. Right. And text messaging, personal messaging. And direct messaging. every person around you has a camera. Oh, to be sure. Yes. Yeah. You know, which I think about that too sometimes. When I was a kid growing up, it's like, oh, doggone it, I wish we had a camera. Oh, now you do. Everybody has <laughs> every, one. Every time. Yeah. And if you don't have your phone, the person next to you has one. Mm -hmm. And they'll take a picture for you. <laughs> Even if you don't want them to. <laughs> right. Okay, so what I'm saying is there's a very gray area here between emotional relationships and friendships yes and work wife look i i hate to break this to you but i have to say and ron i i hope you agree with me you are actually having an emotional affair right now yeah uh you can you can attempt to justify it by saying that you're not having sex with this person but um the emotional intimacy that you are experiencing kind of dilutes the connection that you share with your husband, wouldn't you say, Ron? Well, and absolutely. And I know that uh, my wife had uh, a very close friend at her work named Stuart. Great guy. Every time we went to the Christmas party or any work function, I would talk to Stuart. Really good guy. That was her work husband. And it's... Unfortunately, this is kind of the single most common gateway to cheating scenario, really. So it's, and when I was uh, in the sheriff's department, my, I ate lunch with uh, Carol, was her name. I ate lunch with her four days awake. We had the same work schedule. We ate together every single day. Mm -hmm. We, and the dispatcher knew that we were, uh, we were good together. And so they sent us on a lot of calls for service together. So we ended up working and being together just about 10 hours every single day. So, and my wife knew Carol intimately also, and they were, you know, they weren't like good buddies, but it is, it's, it's a really, 
very common scenario? Well, it's a dangerous recipe, Ron. Um, you can, let's say, platonically befriend a person that you find attractive or come to find out that eventually you are attracted to them. Um, they become, let's say, a confidant. Right. And the key ingredient, well, you have a tendency to talk to them about shortcomings or even problems with your relationship with your partner. And that is going to create an emotional distance between you and your spouse. Yep. And, and that's, you know, you're asking where the line is. That's the line right there. Well, and, and when you think about it, so let's say you do something great on your weekend. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you want to do? You can't wait to get to work yeah. and tell your work wife right. or your work husband about mm -hmm. it. Um, they they kind of, your work, your work wife or husband becomes your, your person mm -hmm. to share things with. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is, it's, you know. Is that crossing this line, Ronnie? Really? It's, that's, there's, that's the emotional line. You still haven't crossed the physical line yet. Mm -hmm. But certainly, I mean, you kind of have to keep in mind that your partner has, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to say it, but you, you really are. These are things that, and my wife and I, we talk a lot uh, and we can talk about anything, but there are just are, there are things that I wouldn't share with her that I shared with Carol at work. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. See, we keep stepping over this line here yeah. it's each time. Now, your work husband, when you're telling he or she, it could work either way, obviously, they see you through rose-colored glasses because they're only hearing your side of the story. Um, the work husband doesn't have to share bills and mortgage payments right. uh, or you're leaving toothpaste all over the sink. You didn't see that. Uh, plus, he gets what you're going through in your career in a way that your partner possibly can't because, you know, you're both boots on the ground there. But the that doesn't really mean that it's not important to find a way to make your spouse understand what you're experiencing through your own perspective. You have to talk to them. Right. That's the deal. Well, and... At no point are we saying you can't have friends right. from work. No, it's... Uh, in fact, you, it would make work very unattractive to have to go every day yeah. if you didn't like anybody there. Right, right. So that's not what we're saying at all. Um, but if you just happen to find... And you know what? Sometimes people become more attractive to you the more you talk to them yeah. and the more time you share with them. Well, you know, Ronnie, it's because I'm so freaking charming. <laughs> uh, let's think. try to think of something else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Ronnie and I <clears throat> have come up with a list that we're about to share with you here uh, when it comes to your work wife yep. or your work husband, or it doesn't even have to be in the workplace. This can be a friend. Uh, an old acquaintance, uh, high school sweetheart. There's a lot of situations that can come up. So here's our list. Number one, don't play down your relationship. Make it clear to those you work with and socialize with that, and this is important, you are in a committed relationship and said relationship is a top priority, okay? Yep. That's number one. Uh, next, Invite your spouse. Uh, if you're going to have a night out of the off, uh, an out of office dinner or drinks with your work friend, bringing your spouse or partner to the into the friendship is kind of a litmus test, mm -hmm. you know, for the whole friendship, and you know, kind of demonstrates the, your intentions to your friend. Number three, never share private information about your spouse. This, I honestly believe, is the catapult into a uh, relationship that might be a little bit in, too intimate. Yeah. Uh, don't talk through problems in your relationship with your hot work friend. Uh, that's how you open the door for him to erode the intimacy of your marriage. See, now you're letting a third in here and there's no room. Uh, if you're having trouble, it's natural 
to want to seek counsel see someone if you need to yep. someone who is not involved in the situation and can take a step away and say well geez here's what's going on look to a therapist trusted friend with whom there's no complication like attraction on either side or best of all your spouse okay talking to he or she about the problem is the best way to solve this yeah this next one uh i don't do this to any with anyone but don't discuss your sex life uh, but what about that time that yeah oh, i don't no. i don't talk about it no. uh be careful when discussing your relationship with your partner altogether so uh, again you're you're trying to separate your work life from your home life and that's one of those things that's a kind of a taboo subject for me is talking about sex life uh, this is where the trouble begins right here next up oh, is oh yeah do not text a message with a friend you're attracted to late at night oh that's a oh you know what that is that's like teeing up a big oh, bomb yeah on a golf tee and whacking it with your driver. Yeah. That's what you're asking for. Do you want that? No, nobody wants no, that. Nobody needs that. No. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> uh, this next one, be transparent with your spouse. So obviously, you know, whatever the na nature of your friendship is, just disclose it. Be open with, about it. Mm -hmm. uh, let your spouse know from the very start if you have an attraction or feelings to someone. Uh, it seems awkward. But an open flow of communication is way better than secrecy. It depends on the person you're telling. That's Sorry. true. That is true. <laughs> uh, but, you know, my wife and I have a thing where we'll be at a restaurant and we'll see uh, a waiter or a waitress and she'll say, oh, she is cute. I'm like... Wait a minute. What are you doing is to me? Is this a setup? Hey, I'm on to you. <laughs> crazy, so crazy chick. We, we do. I mean, God, we've been married so long that, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to start over <laughs> training a new wife. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Welcome to Men Are So Smart. Next up, never, ever use secret apps Ooh. or private messages that are hidden from your spouse to communicate with your friend. She's going to find them anyway. Do not erase communications between you and your friend. And this, I'm going to I'm going to say this is key to this whole episode right here. If you have to erase your texts, you probably shouldn't have written it. Yeah, you already know you're kind of emotionally cheated. You don't need us to tell you. Yeah, you already know it. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh this one, work on your connection with your spouse. So if you feel like you're getting too cozy with your coworker, you might need to work a little bit harder building a, a better relationship with your spouse. If you took all that time you're spending with your friend and applied that to your marriage, perhaps this would not even be an issue. Is right. that? I mean, that pretty much sums it up. I mean, you know what? So my wife works Monday through Friday. I'm basically I'm kind of done for for this work work year, mm -hmm. um, but so we have Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and so we try to do whatever we can and everything we can on those two days. We go for hikes. We go. We just go to Sam's Club and walk around and sample everything. Uh, we go. We walk the dogs. We do as much as we can together, and we talk while we're doing it. So none of it should seem like a chore. It is, you're, you're building a bridge. You're building it, not burning it. Sometimes I will even let my wife come out to the garage. Oh, well, yeah. wow. Dang. Mm -hmm. But only if she's bringing food. That's crazy. So, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's not crazy at Sandwiches. all. Sandwiches. Yeah. Somebody's got to make Appetizers. Them. All right, that's going to wrap up this episode. Uh, thank you very much, WorkWife, for your email. Yeah. If you have questions about relationships that you'd like a response from Men Are So Smart, we're glad to take them on. Here's my email address. It's lou at menaresosmart.com. Mine's Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E, at menaresosmart.com. Send them away. Or, you know, have at it. Uh, the, the comment section is below. Yeah. And uh, if you disagree with what we've said, or if... For that matter, you have something you'd like to add to this? Yeah. 
please do so below. We would appreciate it. You know what? And the comments are great because sometimes they'll start like a little more discussion on top of it, whereas an email is very one-to-one. -one. So, uh, you know, start the comments rolling to see what pe other people think. Yeah, and you know what? You know what's really cool, as we said in the beginning of the episode? Send it to both of us. Yeah. Because then you'll get an individual answer from each of us. Right. And, and then we can see where we go from there. Okay, subscribe to our channel. Click the bell. That'll give you notifications each time a new show comes out, and you'll see it before anybody else. Subscribe to our channel. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. How about we do this again next time? Oh, can't wait. What do you say? Yeah, I'm All looking right. forward to Let's it. Let's do it. All right.